אוקיי, קאט קינגדום! ניו סיזון, סופר, סופר, סופר ספיישל גאסט, ואני חייבת להגיד, אני מנסה להגיד אותה פה, אני מנסה להגיד אותה פה, אני מנסה בילי לי, תן לי, מי לב, תן לי את כל מי הרט, כי אני יודעת כמה בזה אתם. ואנחנו אמרנו לפני הקמרה, לפני שהגעתי את הסטארט, אני מאוד 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 שאתם הראשון של הסדרה, כי אני רוצה להגיד את הסדרה הזאת כל כך. אני חושב שזו הסדרה הכי חשובה, אבל כל כך חשובה. אז ראשון כל, ברכות לכם על הקטע על הלוז. And it's such an honor to have you. Thank you. You I know that. that I'm a huge fan of your work. Mm-hmm. I love and adore you. And I am so happy that you're here today, kicking off the new season of Cat on the Loose. Yeah, congrats. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry it took me so long. It's, it's been hectic, but I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> uh, thank you. And I went to see your comedy show a few months ago mm-hmm. at the, um, oh my God. What Ice House? That? Ice House in Pasadena. Mm-hmm. And you are incredible. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and you are on stage with so I actually didn't know because when you invited me like come trust I'm like yes I'm gonna go I have to see this chick on stage so I didn't even read the lineup like I didn't care who else was there mm-hmm. so when I get there the the other uh, comedians were like heavy weights like really famous names people that have been doing comedy for a long yeah. time yeah And I mean, I'm not trying to kiss your ass. I'm just being very fair and very honest. You really, really hold your weight like with these guys that have been doing that for decades, like including, for example, Tom, Tom Arnold. Mm-hmm. And so when you came on stage and you do your, your, your skit, your comedy, I'm like, wow, like the confidence. How do you <laughs> do it? Let's start talking about that. How did you become a, a stage comedian? Um, okay, well, the confidence is key, <laughs> that's for sure. Cause I, Can you please teach <clears throat> us a little bit of that, please? <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, how am I sharing the stage with these legends? Exactly. Um, and I do get nervous, especially when there's such... crazy amazing powerful people on the stage but um <clears throat> it's crazy I like accidentally became a vegan or a vegan a, co- a comedian <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna talk about that yeah. too <laughs> a, a vegan comedian or a comedian <laughs> vegan <laughs> I do talk about being vegan in my set though <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, but I sold a pilot to ABC <laughs> Disney a half hour comedy and my team was like well you If you're gonna be writing and possibly starring in a comedy you should probably take some comedy classes and I was like oh yeah that's true and I just started talking to friends and I was getting this like butterfly people were like oh my god Billy you're funny you should be a comedian and so I took this course called pretty funny women um, my teacher Lisa was amazing and she saw something in me and she was like you have a very natural talent your timing is really good your point of view is really important and She like offered me a scholarship for her next course and I just kept on doing it and then I kept on getting booked and booked and like I feel like I jumped on this comedy train that's moving really fast and I can't get off and it's not stopping yeah and and by the way for people that don't know a lot about the LA scene you are booking major venues yeah yeah Like you're at the bourbon room you mm-hmm. are like you said the ice house in Pasadena is iconic it's, it's been around forever so it's not like you're doing like you know this shady hole in the walls like let's let's be fair yeah you are booking major major mm-hmm. like you're saying not only you are sharing the stage with super heavy weights of comedy you are booking the ma- most important venues in, yeah. in comedy and that's v- insane yeah I know I'm, I'm <laughs> I'm super blessed and you know it does it does help because of having a name and being on Vanderpump um, it did get me into the door open some windows for me yeah however I've worked with two coaches I still work with them I really put in the work to be funny and to make sure that my craft is good right so that way I can be asked back and it's like it's one thing for someone to invite me on stage but when they ask me back that's really important because it shows my work yeah. 
Yeah. No, I agree. I think TV is fantastic. Of course, it like opens up so many doors mm-hmm. and so many windows. However, like you said, you know, it only goes so far because if they invite you to do a comedy show, especially in these places, yeah. and you suck, yeah. they're going <laughs> to say, thank you, Billy. Okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs> but you, they keep inviting you mm-hmm. back and your audience keeps growing. Yeah. And I, I'm a witness, like I was there. You're really adorable and you're really sweet. And I, I'm not a, I could, I don't think I could ever do it, but I think it's very tough. I, I you know, I'm an artist. I, 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 I've been acting on and off my entire life. I think comedy is the toughest form of art. It's so scary. Because the way I feel is like, if you're, if you fall flat, like if people don't laugh and you're standing there, like, it's not like you're filming. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're a little fucked, right? (laughs) You feel like shit. Yeah. And so you got to like entertain an audience that Mm -hmm. many times is a tough audience. And like you said, you have to be organic. Yeah. How do uh, do you think it's something you learn or it's just something that comes natural, natural to you? It's something you learn too, for sure. Like, I think my timing was always very more natural. Obviously, my point of view, but being on stage and like learning how to navigate the crowd and the vibration and like the mood in the room also the venue some some venues like the bourbon room i love it it's one of my favorite places to hang out but it was built for comedy it's not built for laughs so i don't get that immediate validation of that laugh back but like the comedy store it's built for laughs so the way the room is built I hear that laugh right back at me. So it's that media validation, which gives me a little bit more confidence, a little bit more fun, like vibe. And I have overall just a good performance. However, it does take practice. Like I didn't really start enjoying comedy until like a year in. Like I, it's only been a year. And so I'm just now starting to enjoy comedy. But why weren't you enjoying it? Because I was learning so much. I was nervous. Uh I was navigating. So you were nervous. At the beginning. Oh my God. Yes. And people will be like, you look like you you own this stage. You're so comfortable and confident. And sometimes I feel like I'm about to shit my pants. Oh, my God. But I think it's just I come off pretty still and composed. But I am way more comfortable now. Now it's starting to feel like kind of like a job. I don't get as nervous anymore. Um, It's just like another day at the office. However, you know, when I am playing next to legends, I do get a little bit more nervous because they get so many amazing laughs and they're like, you know. But you do too because I was there and I saw it. Yeah, and I have such great fans and people, even my comedy fans are starting to grow and like, you know, I went to New York and did a show and afterwards, people were lined up to take a photo with me. Like, it was such an amazing, like, just like, even almost like a standing ovation. Like, people were hollering and standing and screaming. Yeah. Me. They're cheering for you because mm-hmm. you're a sweetheart. So let's rewind your story. For my audience, maybe a lot of people don't know about you, don't know who you are, and I want them to find out about you because you're incredible. You mentioned Vanderpump Rules. Mm-hmm. How did you end up there? Because that was before the comedy shows. Right. Um, so I was casted through a production company, Evolution Media. Um, we just had a couple meetings, and I think we were just trying to like place me on a TV show. It really started, I owned a restaurant in Sherman Oaks, California. It was a cafe. And a lot of producers would come in. And I was living stealth at the time, which means I was not letting people know that I was trans. Oh, really? I was pretending that I was cis. So why? Because I got, I was discriminated so much. It was as if like society put me in a corner and just beat the hell out of me. That's awful. Because when you don't fit into a box... You know, especially when I first started my transition and my hormones, people didn't know if they could place me into the boy box, the girl box. Yeah. And when society can't put you in a box or label you, yeah. they don't know what to do with you. Yeah. So a lot of times they're mean to you. by the way. <clears throat> oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. So I experienced, um, you know, just a lot of rejection. And through that, I just like once I did have all my surgeries and I did fully transition, it was as if society rolled out the red carpet. They all all of a sudden put me in the female box. They loved and accepted me. Men were lined up to date me. And I was like, oh my God, I'm finally the cool kid. I'm finally like being loved and accepted. I don't want to tell anyone that I'm trans. I don't want that to go away. It's like almost like the Cinderella story at midnight. I did not want that night to end. And I didn't want all this love and attention to end. 
so I kind of disowned my trans experience when I lived south and I dated men didn't tell them and it, it bit me in the ass because I completely fell in love with this guy and then I go to tell him and he was horrified very really? upset rejected oh me oh my god and the way that I told him is because one day we were in my cafe I'll never forget this a trans woman of color comes into my cafe she's noticeably masculine and people know that she's trans and when she leaves all my regulars including my boyfriend at the time was like did you see that freak that's disgusting and my heart dropped that is so mean I got such anxiety and I was like oh my god I'm living a lie like I'm my part of my own community is suffering yeah. And I'm standing behind this counter hiding in my, you know, uh, cis assuming, um, you know, personality and everything. And I was like, well, I need to do something. I need to, like, tell him, first of all. So when I told him, he was so upset about it. He even mentioned how, like, he once, like, almost hit a trans woman on the bus because oh. he was so disgusted by her. So I... I was like, how on earth am I attracting someone who I love, who I thought was a spiritual, amazing man, but also so transphobic? And it was because I was holding on to so much fear about my own trans yeah. experience. So I decided to sell my restaurant. The owner of the building bought me out. I took a year to reflect. I did ayahuasca ceremonies, did a lot of healing, and I started blogging about it. And that was when blogs were really popular. And... I just started talking about my trans experience from the heartache, from from all of the rejection. And it kind of caught on. And then people were like, we want to put you somewhere. We want to put you on TV. And that's how Vanderpump happened. It was through multiple meetings. And I was casted, even though they say like, oh, Billy Lee came and filled out an application and she got a hosting job it's like who goes from owning a restaurant to a host okay so it's all it, it's not like you were at, you know it's all baloney for the show you weren't like working there right i mean you do go through a training you okay. do, do the but technically we all started working did there. it for the show yes okay so they put you there as a host yes and i later okay. found out that i i was really tokenized because there is no trans person casted on the network complete network of bravo before or after me mm -hmm. and i just um you know it was like they got what they want they got the attention and they got my story out there and and then it was just like yeah it just it ended up being a disappointing situation um because i found out like even you know i went around town talking about how my fairy godmother lisa vanderpump and then you find out your fairy godmother is actually like the wicked witch Why? <laughs> of the West Hollywood. Why is that? I mean, the, she just is su comes from such a place of privilege and there's just a lot of gaslighting. Um, and like even like, you know, there's a whole movement happening to unionize reality TV. Right. Um, Bethany Frankel is leading it. I love yeah. her. She's a legend. And I remember seeing, I don't know if it was TMZ or someone did an interview or like caught up with Lisa Vanderpump and they're like talking about unionizing reality TV. Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh, I don't think it's needed. I'm like, of course you sitting in your throne and all your privilege in the hills of Beverly Hills, you're going to think that these small people who are working 18 hours a day and who are suffering, who don't have any resources for mental health, they don't need it. The reason why there's a union is to make sure that these employees, make sure that the small people, the producers, the stars of these shows are protected. She doesn't relate. Doesn't relate. How many seasons were you on the show? Two. Two seasons. So you didn't know anybody there before? <sighs> No, I didn't know anyone. I didn't watch the and show. And why did you leave? It was kind of a, a a mixed situation. So I you have your meeting with the company, the production company and the producers before each season. They're like, what are you doing? What are you into? Kind of like, what would we do? What would we follow you? What would we, what, what would your storyline be? Um, and when I was leaving season seven, 
there was rumors that I was having an affair with Tom Sandoval. Right. Which I is remember that. I saw that. You got a, a lot of heat for that. Yes. Because you guys actually and became really good friends, right? Yes. He's one of my best friends. Mm-hmm. Like, he just, you know, as a trans woman, to have so, have a cis hetero ally, like someone like him, to go around town and, and to talk on my behalf and say positive things, I'll always have that guy's back because that's what he did for me. Mm-hmm. And a lot of those cast members, a lot of cis hedro men did the opposite. They were uncomfortable with my trans experience. They didn't want to film with me. Really? They literally asked oh the producers not to film with Are me. Are you serious? Yes. Oh my God. But then I have Tom over here who is like asking to film with me, Aww. making sure that I'm taken care of. Even like to a point of like, obviously I didn't have any resources. The thing is with Vanderpump is they gave me this platform as a trans woman, but no resources. I barely got paid. I was struggling to pay my bills. And here comes Tom to help me pay my bills. Like he literally was there, still is to this day, one of my brothers. So of course I'm gonna be there for him. And when we were going into the next season, they're like, oh, we heard that you and Tom hang out a lot. Like what's the story with you and Tom? So. If I was to do another season, it seemed to me that their interest was for me to um, have an affair with Tom. Like, that was the vibe that I was getting. The questions kept on going back to what's going on with you and Tom. And I'm over here like, oh, I'm doing this and activism and I have all these amazing things happening. They didn't give a shit about that. Yeah, because that doesn't make for good reality. Exactly. They want the scandals, exactly. of course. Yeah, they want to at least insinuate that mm-hmm. there is something going on. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you just, decided to leave. Well, th- I told him this is what I want to do. And I said, no, we don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. So, and I wasn't going to go any other route. I wasn't going to be a home wrecking whore. I mean, we all see what happened to um, Raquel or Rachel. Right. Like these things really affect your life like because it is your real your life, life. Yes. at the end of the day like w- i mean we're t- talking about you're really good friends with tom obviously he made a horrible mistake yes yes uh, uh we all make mistakes i don't like judging people at all mm-hmm. yeah he made a horrible mistake he was very nasty but the backlash was also out of control out of control it was both as if on the man murdered and, someone exactly yeah. both on him and and on on uh rach or whatever mm-hmm. yeah and that's one thing that I agree that Lisa said. She did say that. She's like, wait a minute. They didn't kill anybody. Everybody needs to like hold their horses because yeah. they were getting death threats, right? Yeah. No, I appreciate it. It got when, out of control. I appreciated when Lisa said that. That yeah. was that was really amazing of her to do that. Um, yeah, I mean, his mental health. Like, Raquel had to go to a mental facility because of yeah. her mental health. And here's the thing is, These production companies, these networks, they don't offer mental health support like that. They don't. Like, here, we'll pay for this. We'll help you with this. You're really left on your own, which is why unionizing reality TV is so important. Like, I was there to help pick Tom up off the floor, take him to comedy shows, take him to his favorite karaoke bars. Like, anything and everything I could to like uplift this person who was literally hated we were constantly followed by paparazzi like fans would come up to the door it was just so overwhelming and i felt it was such a dark place and i just all i could do was just try to help him in any way possible and and i think obviously you are a very loyal great friend i would do that for a friend as well because i saw you in the media a million times And you were like standing by him because he's your friend. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what he did. I'm not justifying what he did, but I'm saying, what are you supposed to do? Say, fuck you. And and they were trashing you as well. Mm -hmm. Like you said, they're like, oh, are they having an affair? Why is she getting out of his house? What's wrong with them? Look at her face. What are are they gossiping about? And I remember looking because, of course, tabloids, they want to sell crap. But I remember thinking about you like, what is a friend supposed to do? You turn your back on another friend. Like, I'm sure Rachel has her friends and, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. whatever. You know, you need to stand by the person, whether they made a mistake or not. Yeah, of course. That's what friends are for. And it's peeled on you in many ways. And here's the thing is, people don't realize this, is I didn't talk to Tom for six weeks. When it first happened, I was devastated. The night, two or two nights after, we were all at 
Ariana and Tom's house. Ariana was living there at the moment. I was crying. It was like there was a death in the family. I refused to talk to Tom for six weeks because I was so upset. But then I get a phone call from our mutual friend who I introduced him to, um, Kimmy and Jason. And Jason is his um, manager for the music and the band and stuff and the podcast. And I, they're like, he's in a really bad place. We're scared. We're going to lose him. And I'm like, you know what? Like, I need to put my ego aside and like put my own feelings. It's not about me and just show up for this person. And that's that's what I did. I literally ended up staying a whole weekend with him just to make sure he was good. And that's when the paparazzi was like, oh, she's staying there right. and there's an affair. And it's like, I'm just making sure my friend stays alive. Yeah. That is priority for me. I don't give a fuck what anyone else thinks. Yeah. As you, as I don't think you should, yeah. yeah. But in a way, uh, uh, yeah, I agree with you. There are a lot of bad things that, that, that come with the territory of doing reality TV. But it did give you a platform to uh, showcase your work and to be, um, I'm not, I, I don't know if I should use the word role model, but maybe to be uh, a spokesperson, to, to give voice. Yeah to other transgenders mm -hmm. because it's a community that doesn't have a lot of public voices. Yeah. We don't have, yeah, exactly. That's one reason why, you know, when I did all my ayahuasca ceremonies and my therapy and my just really trying to fall in love with my trans experience, I never imagined myself being in reality TV. I never watched Vanderpump or any reality television before. I still don't. But I knew that I could be a voice. I knew that I could show trans women are worthy of jobs because our unemployment rate was so, like, literally three times higher than the general population at the time. And it, it was like, I'm going to go into this as a mission. I had no idea that I would truly, like, fall in love with these people or have such close relationships with these people um, and also have such heartache and, you know, trauma surrounding these people. Um, so... I still to this day, when I am in therapy, when I'm working on my gratitude journal, I'm so thankful for the Vanderpump experience, even though it was very painful at times, and I was really disappointed at times, I'm still really thankful because no matter what, it's got me here. Even the trauma that I've had as a childhood, I'm at a point in my spiritual journey that I'm super thankful for it because it has literally led me here. If I wasn't born trans, I think I would still be in Indiana, like not really doing much and because I was born trans because I was so different and I was bullied I left to be free mm -hmm. and it's just like all these things really lead up to where I'm at today so if there is somebody out there listening to you because I know because I get messages mm -hmm. this is one of the reasons why I really wanted to have you here I do get messages from transgender teenagers mm -hmm from all over the world not just the united states that say like you know i my family would never support me i don't know what to do i can't get a job i i get bullied in school nobody accepts me yeah. what should i do what is the message of hope that because obviously like you have a, a kick-ass career you're very brave you're doing amazing. You're beautiful. You had the courage to take all the steps. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't have this courage. Yeah. <sighs> um, I'll tell you a little story. This is how I feel like I got the courage. When I was, um, when I was little, uh, the bullying was really, really bad, like in grade school. I ended up missing three years, I think total, two or three years of grade school um, because it was so bad. But I would go into the bathroom of the boys' bathroom and all over the walls, it would be Billy sucks dick, oh Billy, you know, like just horrible things. And I used to have such anxiety and I would be so scared and so sad to even just go into the boys' restroom. And one day I like just went in there and I was like, I just need to like transform this fear somehow some way into like a in love or just a different way so I wasn't constantly scared and I started thinking like wow like the I must be something if these people literally take the time out of their day to carve into a piece of wood about me no matter what's said because obviously it's not true I didn't even know how to suck dick then I was <laughs> a kid but like 
whatever can be so yes oh my god but i took that and i was like wow i have to be special for them to take the time and it's not just one person like there was so many things on that wall about me and that moment right there that whole transformation or from like my thoughts from fear to love was a miracle because it really taught me throughout my life to take these really hard moments and try to find a miracle in those moments try to find the love in those moments and a lot of that is just like self-love being there for myself what are my dreams what are my hopes constantly believing I spent a lot of time in the imaginary circumstance or the imaginary world and as an actor you know imaginary circumstance is really important but I would constantly daydream and imagine myself in another world in another state like how to get out and I did. I, I literally followed every single thing that I ever wanted to do. Um, but it is hard. And I guess I'll tell every kid out there, like, if you're not getting the love and acceptance from the outside, you got to get it from within. Yeah. Because that's, you that's, have yourself. That's the tough part. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's super tough. But we're constantly wanting the validation from outside, yeah. you know. And it's the going back to the bathroom thing, I took that self-love and I internalized it. And I made that moment for me a, a better situation. Yeah. So I wasn't so scared of going into that restroom or seeing the writing on the walls. Um, I sure hope that they can see you and, and they can say, you know, what? I can be the next Billy. I can be like Billy. You know, I can find this happiness and this yes. fulfillment and follow my dreams. And dreams do come true. It Dreams come you true know? 100%. I, I'm living and breathing it. Yeah. Um, and just, yeah, it's like love yourself and believe in yourself. Um, and also, I was scared to death to tell my parents. And my mom said to me one time, she was like, "If when I told her, you know, when I first moved out to L.A., she's like, just don't start wearing dresses. And I internalized that. And I was like, oh my God, my mom's never going to accept me for being trans. My mom is obsessed with me for being her daughter. Like, she's literally like my daughter. So this. now you have supportive parents. I have amazing supportive oh, parents thank goodness. they're that's my biggest amazing. fans oh, that's but it great. took some time you yeah. know like and my mom was messing up on my pronouns back in the day a lot and i finally was like mom if you don't really think about this and take this into consideration i'm gonna stop talking to you for a while and that scared her and then she really started using the right pronouns and like my mom truly does see me as her daughter and it's like such a beautiful thing and i'm so grateful for that but you know it it took some hard conversations some yeah. and it takes a minute. Yeah. But that's amazing that you have a sporty family. Let's talk for a second about David Chappelle. Mm hmm. Uh, I know that's yeah. a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You know what's crazy about this is like people keep on asking me about it because also I'm a comedian. So, yeah. you know, as a trans woman. And I'm probably going to get a lot of shit for saying this, but. I think he's really talented and I think he's like brilliant as a comedian. He just kind of blows my mind. Like I don't okay. As a comedian, I'm super impressed by him. I think that he is like next level, like so funny. He is. He's very talented. Very talented. However, like as a trans woman, I don't like I try to keep what I discuss and what I make fun of in my own lane. Like, you know, I, I make fun of myself. And by, yeah, and I think that's very brave. Yes, because you are there on stage making fun of yeah. intimate, and I'm not going to tell your jokes here. You guys are going <laughs> to yeah. have to go there because she's really good. <laughs> but you make like some really cool jokes, X rated jokes, uh -huh. intimate jokes. About your life, yeah, yeah. And, about, and everything. And I think, well, that that takes guts, and it's they're brave jokes, they're amazing jokes. But like you said, they're about your own experience. They're about my own experience. Yes, like I'm not, you know, I have, I have, I do have some experiences with men of color, especially black men in the black culture. They are not as open with trans women. They're not open with any male person or trans woman, or anyone being feminine, they're not open with the LGBT community as much. That's a very known thing. Um, and so I've had personal experiences with black men, especially dating. I choose not to go on stage and discuss that because I don't ever want to offend or upset 
um, a black person, especially a man who is trying to um, just live his life and like he's under his own pressure of being masculine and you know in that culture masculinity is everything for these guys so when they feel that it's being affected or um for somehow some way that they are you know it's just it's it's hard for me to wrap my head around me making fun of someone who has their own experience like mm-hmm. i would just prefer to make fun of my own experience right, it I just hear keeps you. me yeah, you don't want to hurt anybody yes i don't want to hurt anyone so and I, he is making jokes about transgender yes and and now um people, people in general people in general people with disability yeah and you know i'm vegan i make fun of jokes about me being vegan yeah. obviously but um so i just try to stay in my own lane and i wish he would do that as well Um, But for some reason, he's really fixated on the trans experience. And here's what I think. You know, like how people are, they say a lot of homophobia comes from men who are actually having thoughts of being gay. Like they're suppressing it. So it comes out in homophobic ways. Maybe one day he might want to (laughs) transition. Like. When I was watching his special, I was like, "The or man- date a transgender." Yes, but date the, a transgender. The man had more concealer on than I've seen in, on drag I queens. Don't know. Did you see his recent special? The concealer <laughs> was insane. His <laughs> his coat thing was like almost like a dress. I'm like, Dave Chappelle is wearing enough concealer and almost a dress, <laughs> but he's up here talking about trans woman. I mean, I, I'm not. I, I don't know. I'm not gonna talk about somebody that I don't know, but I do agree with you that many, many times. People that talk trash or make fun of something they desire yes. or they want to experience oh, sure. or that, because otherwise, why would you like, why would it bother you? You yeah. know what I mean? So I don't know. Yeah. And I have a lot of black <laughs> men. I have a lot of black men who are all about it, but they don't want to tell anyone. They want to keep it a secret. Oh, yeah. I'm not. Same. I have yeah. a lot of friends. Mm-hmm. A lot, I have married friends, by yeah. the way, like. You know, so I've seen it all. Mm -hmm. And they have like this underground life and everything because they don't want to talk about it. But yeah, so you never know. And I will say this. Well, like this is my last thing with Dave Chappelle. He did talk about how like trans pussy is like impossible meat. So I'm vegan. I have date men and I always introduce them to impossible burgers like because that's what I eat (laughs) and whenever and so you're so cute (laughs) and these men will be like wow babe this impossible burger is like the real thing it's like juicy it's pink inside yeah it tastes really good well those same guys that I date say the exact same thing about my pussy they literally like say, wow, this is like the real deal. It's so juicy and it's pink inside. Like, so I have to say Dave is so right about uh, that. Are, are you, are you endorsed? You, you need the impossible burger yeah. needs to hire you. <laughs> yeah. I did have a partnership with him back in the day. You, really, you need to get it back. But he knows, that he knows what the trans pussy is like. So I definitely think he's had it. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, that's a good question. Like, how do you know how you must have seen it? Hello. Yeah. You oh know? no, he's, uh, he's seen it. He's felt it. So, what is the kind of guy that you want to date or what is the kind of guy that hits on you that wants to date you um oh god they all i feel like hit on me and want to date me but um i don't i'm i'm in the process of wanting to have a baby really oh yes um like alone or you want to like get married like i mean yeah it would be nice to to have it with a partner but i'm not waiting so it's weird when i'm on dates a first or second day and be like, yeah, I'm going to have a baby soon. You know, these guys are <laughs> Oh, you like, want to do like independent projects? So I think, I think I am going to either co-parent or do it independently. Um, and then that way I just, the baby's mine. And if I get into a relationship or a situation like that baby's mine, and then who knows, maybe the baby will be in school someday and I'll meet a guy, another, like a dad or something through that. But my main like mission right now is my career and having a baby um and if a guy comes in and and it happens it happens but i'm not really looking for it and i have trouble even responding to guys that i go on dates with like i just it's not on top of your list right now it's not you don't you you don't want to be in a relationship right now i don't yeah i don't think so i i'm having so much fun with my career and my life um 
that I'm good. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? So no dating for Miss Billy? I mean, I date. Come on. I date. I do date. And I do, like, make out with boys and have a good time. And Where do you meet them? Do you do dating apps? <sighs> Not really. I don't really do dating apps. I get, like, honestly, through the comedy world, I like a lot of, like, if it's a photographer or a comedian, uh-huh. like, most comedians will, you know, want to hang out or hit it. But I just... So usually, like, in your work world... It's usually work, yeah. yeah. Or, like, at the grocery store, I've been, like, asked out or, like, a mutual friend. Um but a lot lately has been just like comedians asking me out. So other than the crappy boyfriend that you had when you had your restaurant, he was an ass. So I'm so proud of you for speaking up and getting rid of him because yeah. nobody needs that kind of energy in their lives. Did you ever have that experience again or from a man or never again? Um, what do you mean? Like a like boyfriend? A, yeah, yeah, like a boyfriend saying anything to you like, oh, my God, I don't want to date a, a transgender. Oh, yeah, guy. yeah. I've had multiple boyfriends who've had um, shame surrounded really? by trans experience. Oh, yeah. my God. If it came to, like, with their parents or, you know, there's just, um, especially, like, I go out there and talk about these really intimate things, especially <laughs> as a comedian. Same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> my entire life, my entire sex life, <laughs> yeah, is on the podcast. Like it intimidates ninety nine point nine. The first question guys ask me, like, are you gonna talk about me on the podcast? Yeah, <laughs> I know. So I do love that comedians get it. You know, like that's why I feel like I might end yeah. up with a comedian. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I think if you relate, if they relate to what you do, they might be less intimidated, right? Yeah. And that's that's usually easier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope you find your prince. Thank you. You certainly deserve it because you're a princess. You are so talented. Tell me if you have comedy shows lined up in the near future so people listening can go. Because I'm telling you guys, if you're listening, if you're in the United States of America, even if you're not in the L.A. area, get a plane and come see her. Because your comedy show is so much fun. It's so real. Mm -hmm. It's so adorable. And I'm going to tell you something. God's honest truth. In general, I don't like going to comedy shows because of what I told you. If the guy is not funny, I feel bad. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm not a person like I cannot really fake shit. Yeah. I'm very organic. Like I'm very <laughs> real. Whatever I feel, you see on my face. I'm not. I'm not a great liar. So if the guy is not funny, I'm like, really? So I avoid comedy shows. And I, you know, you, I think you did a, a show with my friend Jaji. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love Jaji. Yes. I, and I interviewed her for my party. I think she's awesome because she's so organic. And so when I went to see yours, I honestly, from the bottom of my heart, loved you because I thought, you have what it takes to do a comedy skit because it comes, like, so natural to mm-hmm. you. So if you guys are listening, check it out, look at her schedule, and it's totally worth the laughs. It's really, really fun. Yeah, we're my team and I are organizing a tour. So we'll be oh, doing, wow. I'll be doing a spring tour. I'll be doing a pride tour in June. Um, and then my book comes out, Why Are You So Sensitive, um, this summer, um, which is published by Andrew McNeil. And um, yeah, I... I hopefully I'll make it to like a lot of these cities. Um, the tour is uh, more than California going to go. It's around. going to be all over the United States. Wow, Billy! Yeah. Congratulations! I know. Thank you. That I'm, is so exciting. I'm super excited. And then, um, yeah, I'm launching my own podcast, but it's a comedy podcast called Billy and the Kid. Love that. Um, with a really cool comedy um, company called Jam in the Van. Um, so I'm just so many amazing things are happening right now. Crazy busy. Yeah. And you know what? You deserve all the success in the world because you are so brave. Thank you. And I know that this is a very tough way, like a, a long, long road to get here. Yeah. And, and and I think you're a beautiful, beautiful voice for transgender people mm-hmm. all over the world listening and hopefully you're inspiring them. 
Yeah, thank you. I think that's what I'm here for is yeah. to be of service and to use my story in that yeah. way. You're incredible. I'm so honored that thank you did you. this. Thank you. Thanks for I having love. me. You're incredible. Yeah. Congratulations on all your success. Yeah, thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed this conversation. Ch and, and on Instagram, it's your, it, it, well, tell me it's your. It's me, Inst Billy Lee. It's me, Billy Lee. Check out her work because she's adorable, incredible, phenomenal. <laughs> Hopefully we'll see you on TV again. Yes. Too, right? Yes, One soon. Of these yes. Days. Yeah. Thank you, Billy. Love you. Love and I'll you. see you guys very soon.